Hello everybody, it's Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And today we've got a sort of different video, i.e. it doesn't involve Lancasters whatsoever. Oh, I'm kind of Lancastered out to be honest, and I'm sure you can understand that. Um, so anyway, as you all know, today is Sunday, Sunday the, what is it, the 15th of May 2022. And I'm hoping to get this video out today so you'll get it fresh. Um, and basically, if you remember, I went to Milton Keynes show last Sunday. I did talk about it and met up with Phil Fisk, which was a very big surprise. I mean, it, he's been following me from day one, I think. And up until a few weeks ago, I always thought Phil was in America. I don't know why I just assumed he was in America. So there we go. Um, and I saw his beautiful display of tornadoes and fell in love. And as you all know, because of my review in the week, he sold me one at a very, very reasonable price. Thank you very much, Phil. Brilliant. So first of all, shout out to Phil. Um, you can go over to um, Phil's Model Shed if you're on YouTube, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Phil's Model Shed, and he's got a load of um, pictures and stuff on there on his, I don't do Facebook, so I can't go and have a look, but uh, he does have a Facebook page, do you call it, or a Facebook channel, I don't know, um, and it's called Phil's Model Shed. At the end of this video, there will be like a montage of photographs with some music and stuff of his kits with a description of what's actually gone into them, and um He's just a tornado nutcase. It's just, <laughs> he's, I think he's building his sixth one at the moment. I mean, come on. You know, six of them on the trot. Absolutely crazy. Lost his plot. He's lost the marbles and he's had it. So, anyway, the first thing he said to me is a couple of things that are wrong with this kit that need to be sorted. And if you've watched anybody build this, if you're interested in my review and you've gone and bought one and you've watched any online builds, you will see that one of the biggest problems is underneath the fuselage where the nose section joins the rear, about here, people get a gap. Uh, and you can see even on this one, they've got a gap. It's opening up. And you can see the nose is kind of, you can see it's, it's attached there, but down here there's a gap. And Phil showed me the way to sort that out. So what you need to do is break away really from the um, build process. So you build up the seat. That's another thing we'll talk about another day. Um, undercarriage. There, what's the thing we need to talk about? And um, but basically, uh, what they'll have you do is build up all the nose gear and everything into the bottom, and then add the sides. So you end up with a sort of a nose, as every tornado kit would be. And then you will basically come along at some point near the end. Where are we? You're going to come along to some point back here, and there you go. You're going to add the nose section. Ah, uh, don't do that. First thing you want to do is get these parts out of the box. So I'm going to put the instructions over there out of the way and get the parts. So I've got the parts, the bags are out. So the first part we need is this one. And this is, sorry, I'm not starting this kit. I'm just doing this because I know that people are buying it. And I want to make sure that Phil's message gets out there before you start your build. So I'm going to take this off the sprue. As I say, I am not starting this kit. I'm just doing this. Because I'm interested myself, I don't even know myself how this is going to work out. Or even if it is going to work out, I'm sure it is, because otherwise, you know, the tornado, itinerary tornado master wouldn't have said it would. And namely Phil Fisk. Um, so basically, we've got that part off there. And then the next part we need is on this sprue here. And this is the main rear belly section of the aircraft, not the top, the bottom. So maybe there's some thick sprue connectors. Oh Jesus, I don't want to use my new ones on that. Let's get some old ones. Grab some oldies. Bloody thick they are. Jesus, look at the size of those. Not next to my finger, the size of it. Massive. Right, so we can get that over there out of the way. I'll tell you what, I'll go and clean these up. There's no you don't want to see me do that. <clears throat> and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got the parts off the sprues, my glasses there. I'm having trouble on the eyesight, as some of you will know. Um, I'm trying these 3.5 reading glass things, just temporarily. So basically, oh, something else I need to do is give a shout out to Clive. Clive's modelling channel. I've uh, watched a couple of his videos now, and he started off, Hello mate, Clive's modelling bench here. No, I don't mean Clive's modelling bench, that's Nigel's modelling bench, I mean Clive's modelling channel. So he's given me a couple of shout outs, he's even given Jess a shout out. So. That's how much he likes us. And he reckons I'm a nice bloke and I'm funny. <laughs> He's obviously never met me. He probably never will. Never wants to, really, because I, I don't really want him to. Because as long as he doesn't meet me, he'll carry on thinking I'm a nice bloke. When he meets me, he'll realise I'm actually not very nice at all. Um, so there we go. So 
First things first I've noticed here, and this is a bit for the newbies out there, something these manufacturers love to do, they put sprue connection points on edges like this, okay? So you can see that there. Now this is the problem I've got now. So I've got these 3.5 reading glasses on, and I can look to my left and see what you're seeing on my computer screen, but now I can't see that because these glasses are for close up. Let me get myself sorted out. Okay, so we'll try the third <laughs> means of trying to improve my eyesight in one 10 minute video shoot. Right, so yeah, these uh, sprue connection points, they're a bit of a pain in the ass because they kind of go, see that, they're kind of, you need this section, this channel clear for the next part to go on, but you've got a sprue nub in there and you, you, you can't sort of just cut it off because you can't get into the V. So this is how I get them off. Now, if you are new to the hobby and you're a younger one, be very, very careful doing this because if the knife slips, you will cut yourself. Um, so try and hold it as far away from it as you can, or perhaps see someone else get them to do it. I've done this a million times, so I'm quite confident. What I do is come along with the knife and I'm using a round edge knife here. Let me bring you in, actually. Let me bring you in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using a round edge knife Okay, and what I'm doing is, if, if I just show you in there, you can see that I'm rocking the blade in there. And what I'm going to do is the same thing, but where that sprue nib is, and just cut it down the back, just like that. Okay, in fact, this one is not very firmly attached at the back at all. Sometimes they're right in there. So that's that removed. And then we can do the same thing, but this way. Okay, and we need to be very careful here because that is on an angle. I'll show you on this one because it's straight. What we need to do is cut in like that and just remove it. You're not trying to do it all in one go. You can do it in sessions. In sections, should I say. So there we go. And there we are. So I can get in there now with this glass file and just clean that out. And then you can see, if you can hear a rustling, that's Jess has just got something out of the bin, the little cow. I'm going to have to check what that is. Okay, so there we are. That's all cleaned up. You can see now in there. Clean that out. And you can see there what a lovely neat job you get with these files rather than using sanding sticks and stuff because you've got such a hard edge on them. I go on about these things all the time. I know I do, but they are so good. Um, they are so good for stuff like this where you need a sharp, clean corner. You need to clean out in, into a corner. You know, there is nothing else that's going to do it as well as these things do. When I reviewed this kit, I said it wasn't very flashy. Um, it's got flash everywhere. It's more like seams than flash, shall I say. It's more like mole seams, but they're bloody everywhere. So, uh, yeah, sorry guys, I wasn't really um, paying attention closely enough. But you can see we've got something there. Again, this file's going to be awesome for getting in there and taking that off. Because it's got a very hard corner and it will remove stuff. Like we had a burr in there. So, there we go. Right, so let's get back to what we're actually here for. So I'll put a picture up now and this is the issue. So you can see now where these two parts are assembled there is a gap. So in real life I'll show you here, push these together and we can see that if we built our nose, built our back half and went to bring them together, you can see, if I bring you in again, you can see that we have, in there, we have a gap. Okay, so we can see how it fits together. We're looking at it this way. See, that all looks fine. Although those tabs look like they could be a bit longer. So when we turn it over, it goes together. And we can see it's not even straight. And that's because this side has got some flash on it. So I'm going to get rid of that flash. Let's bring you back out. There we go. So I'm going to use again this file and get rid of that flash. Okay. I have got some narrower ones here, which are dead handy for getting into gaps like that. So we can get 
get into there, do the end. There we are. So when it goes together now, it should at least be parallel. Yeah, we've got a we've got a gap that needs sorting out. Okay, but at least it's parallel. So we know that what's stopping it going together is this ledge here. Okay, so you've got this ledge in here. You can see that when we put it together, those tabs are being prevented from going forward, or, or rearward, should I say, by that ledge there. But you could also say you could take some material from this ledge here. So if we clean this up a bit, I don't necessarily want to take everything from that ledge because otherwise what we end up with is daylight. Okay, if I if I sand all that away, we'll end up with daylight looking through. So I don't want to do that. But we can see straight away we're getting a bit closer now. I put them on my 321 block. You can see that gap is starting to close up. So I'm just going to remove a little bit more from here because we it's still not quite parallel. Go. It's getting much better. It's closing up now. I want to remove some from here. I think the best thing to do with that is these again these glass files. Let's come along into that corner and just sand away. I'm not removing plastic from this edge here, guys. Okay, I'm not removing anything from this edge here. I'm removing it from. Let me grab a sharpie. I'm going to get a red one. I'm removing it from here. Okay, from that face there. I am not removing it from that lower edge. I'm not removing any from that edge on either part. So what I can do is come in with this file and just take some plastic away. And in the ideal world, what I'd like to get is so that these parts butt together but still leave like a panel line sized gap. So you can see already it's looking much, much better. Let's try this bigger file and this time we'll put, do it down on here. So I'm going to rest it on there. Just taking plastic off of that face to allow these to come closer together and as you can see now we are nearly there so I'm just going to keep going until I'm there and then I'll come back. Right so there we go so by removing material from this ledge in here from these three faces where I put the red ink earlier on and by removing a slight amount of material from this end face on here, not the outer face here, and not this edge here, okay, only the internal bits. And by doing that we have now got it so we can get a perfect seam. Okay, you can see it's gone together there and it's lovely, even if I do say so myself. The other thing I didn't like, it looked like it was just pulling it off to one way, I think it was like that way, I think it was pulling it off that way. So you can see now I've, what I've done is cut away a tiny amount from the side of the tabs and that's giving it a bit of movement. You can see it better this way up. You can see there I've got some movement in there going from side to side. So that means it will just find its own centre then nicely rather than be pulled about. So there we go. That's the first bit. So thank you for that. That is not anything to do with me. I have just done as I have been instructed by Mr. Phil Fisk. So thank you very much for that, Phil. Um, I wouldn't have noticed that. I wouldn't have found it anywhere. I haven't read it anywhere else. I'm not even sure if it's your own idea or if it's something that's been passed down to you. But I'm just passing it on to the modelling community via the medium of YouTube. So there we are. So that's the first thing. Now the next thing we need to look at is the undercarriage. Now, apparently the nose gear is too long. 
And when I look at it here, compared to on this built model, when I look at that there, compared to finished or well, rear aircraft, the top of the tyre is generally just below that oleo. All right. And when Phil does this, he takes three millimetres out of the leg. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to show you how I do it. So let me find the parts on the sprue and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've just been looking at some reference photos for these, um, these nose wheels and it would appear you could kind of take your choice. I mean, I found this picture here, which you can see this is like nearly fully extended. And then I found this picture here where it's, it's pretty much <laughs> collapsed. So I guess anywhere between the two really. Um, so what I've done, I've got a wheel, built it with one of those horrible vinyl tires. By the way, I forgot in my review, we have those vinyl wing gloves as well. So they might be quite nice or quite horrible, I don't know. But um, it's a real shame because they've got the vinyl tires with the lettering on them and the plastic tires have nothing. As we all know, vinyl tires are horrible. And people have been asking me why. Reason is you can't flat spot them accurately. They don't look right. They're very difficult to get paint to adhere to. Um, and they also sometimes they will rot the plastic. Now I've never actually had it happen to me. I have seen them split open. But I've never had it happen to me. Um, but basically they just dry out and split open. Or they will, you know, you've probably seen it where the plastic all turns brown. Um, where the vinyl is sort of leaching into the plastic it just ruins your wheels so I'll be getting aftermarket resin wheels I'll be doing the res kit ones because um, they're much nicer than the plastic ones anyway um, and also you know we don't have any tire lettering we don't have any flat spotting or anything we've got the plastic tires with flat spots but they have no um, and they're not very nice actually but they have no uh, lettering on them so let's make this pop so I've got the oleo off as well the scissors so um, that's just going to clip onto there it kind of stays there on its own so we can put the wheel onto the axle there and we can see that the wheel when we look at it from the side the wheel is quite a distance below the oleo okay it really needs to go up a bit so if we get a rule and we look at where the top of the tire is compared to the oleo we could go three millimeters to have a sort of pretty sag look we could go two millimeters you could go one uh, I certainly wouldn't leave it as it is. It does look a little bit too long. It, it, to my, this was Phil's suggestion and, and he's right. It is a little bit too long, I think. So I think I'm going to go two millimetres, maybe two and a half. Because also remember, a lot of the photographs you see, the aircraft won't be laden with weapons. So when you, laid, when you load them up with weapons, I mean, we all know how Lancaster tires flat spot when they're full of weapons. So you can imagine how much these undercarriage would sag. So what we need to do now is write down some stuff. So we need some stuff written down. So I'm going to first of all do a rough representation of my oleo. Or of my undercarriage legs should I say. There we go. Okay. So basically that's my axle. That's the upright and that's the leg there. So the first thing I want to know is that dimension from there to there. that is, I'm going to use my calipers, I could just use a rule, but I've got calipers, so I'm going to use them. Check it at zero. And that dimension from there to there is 5.17. Okay, so if I aim to make that three, that means I've come down 2.2 millimeters, 2.17. So that's 5.17 at the moment. The diameter, I'm going to measure this because it's a molding, I'm going to measure it across there, it's 2.4, across there, it's 2.6 so we're going for 2.5 okay so that is going to be diameter 2.5 so we're going to use a piece of 2.5 rod or I'll turn something up on the lathe I'll probably turn something on the lathe because I have got I've got a lathe so I can that's probably what I'll do but um if you don't have a lathe you get a piece of 2.5 uh, tubing you could drill 2.5 millimeter hole up into here down into there and then glue it in between um, or you could put like a piece of 1.5 mil brass with a piece of 2.5 mil tubing around it you want to try and get something that's aluminium that you can polish or steel uh, a chrome rod would be good um, I've got some chrome rod but it's, I don't think it's two and a half mil I'll have to dig it out and have a look um, so now we know that we've got that there the other thing is to look at the position 
here of the oleo of the vertical leg in relation to the axle. Now, I think it looks okay when you look at photographs of the real thing. I think it maybe could go for, back a touch. I'm not sure, but um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look at that when I'm doing it. But um, basically, what we need to do now is come along with our saw. So we've got our dimensions written down. You can double check those dimensions just to make sure you don't cock up. So 5.17 in there. Yeah, that's about right. And 2.5 diameter. And what I'm going to do is with my saw, I'm going to literally cut this off. But if you notice, I'm leaving some of the old 2.5 mil diameter there. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can pick up the center. So cut that off of there. Okay, and then what I'll do is hold that there. I should have cut this, this end off first. Hold that there and I'm going to cut that off of there. There we go. So that's that gone. Right. So now we've got that. The reason I've left that stump on there, it gives us a way of finding our centre. So what we can do now is come along with a little po any pointed instrument and we can come along and make a mark in what we think is the centre. Okay, and if it looks like it's off then we can move the hole over just like so okay and then what we can do is come along with a small drill so I've got some little drills here so I'll use I've got a load of these brain ones so I'll use one of these um, and I will grab I am unprepared again sorry guys I'm gonna grab my beautiful David Union pin chuck this is awesome put that in there and then what I can do is just drill in the center. Okay, and just have a look and keep it square. Keep turning it 90 degrees if you start to wander off. Okay, don't go too deep with this drill because if you snap the drill off in there, you'll be buggered. Uh, so I'm going to come along with this one here, which is like a, what's that? That's 1.2, 1.1, 1, that's just 0.8. So I can look on here and I can drill and I can eye that up then and if I see it's not in the center then I can start to move move it over okay now it looks like it used to come this way a bit so I can start to just move it over or go in that way and then pull the drill back until I get it where I want it in the center okay so going on an angle pull the drill back and there because I've made the hole elongated I've got to go slightly bigger with the drill so I'll go to a one mil just let that find its center like that have a look is it in the center and then just keep going like that now I can't do any more on here because my eyes are shot and I need a um, I need to do this through my viewing glass thingy magnifier <laughs> that's what I was looking for so basically what I'm going to do is just drill that out until I get it in the center and then I can cut off that bit of two and a half mil leg that's exposed and then decide where we go from there right so what I've done I've drilled all this out now I'm sorry I can't do it on camera guys but until I get my new glasses I can't really do anything like that on camera because I need a magnifier so what we've done I've got a piece of 1.2 mil brass here okay it's just an off-cut piece of scrap so I've drilled a hole in here, 1.3 mil diameter. The reason I do that, if you drill a 1.2 hole, if you put super glue on there and try to glue that in, the second if your glue is good, as soon as you touch it, it's going to stick. You want some clearance. So you want to be able to put some glue in the hole and then push the rod in. You've got room for them for the glue to hydraulic out. And also you're going to have area around the shaft to glue in. You can see that goes in there and it has a little bit of play, which is what you want because you need... Obviously, if you've got a... A fit which is absolutely, you know, if that's your hole and this is your pin and you have no clearance, there's nowhere for the glue to go. The glue can't do its job. So what you need to do is either rough this surface up with a, with a coarse file or leave some clearance or do both, which is what I will do, do both. So what I'll do is I will make something up on the lathe because I don't have any any two and a half mil material. Um, I'm going to make turn something up on the lathe and what I'll do is I will turn it so that it just goes into there. You can see I've just drilled a 2.5 millimeter hole in there. So it just goes in there. And it's going to go all the way through here. And the reason I've done that is to give it, come on focus camera, I've done it like that to give it ultimate strength. Why will the camera not focus? 
um, because basically if I if I just went in here with like 1.6 um, I would have the leverage of the model of the aircraft levering around it at 1.6mm pin. The way I'm thinking about this I'm almost wholly replacing that plastic and this axle is basically going to be hanging off the 2.5mm diameter so there we go. I have moved it slightly. I've moved it that way I think it was. Um, when I look at pictures it looks to me like the centre line of the axle is pretty much in line with the back edge of the shaft. So the back edge of the 2.5mm you can see I've got there it is in line with the centre of the axle. So when the 2.5mm shaft goes in, here's my 2.5mm shaft if you like. So that's going to slide over there like that and that is going to go up in there. Okay and we can set our length and then trim the trim the shaft off and what we've got there is our is our metal leg. Yeah. So the other good thing about it with a bit of clearance it gives you a bit of wiggle room as well to square things up. So, but I need a I need a tight fit on this one. Although I say I need a tight fit on this one, what I have to do is, is make some marks in it. Because if I don't have a tight fit on there it's going to wobble and break. So I want it to be tight and then what I'll do is I'll cut some grooves in the aluminium or whatever so for the glue to go in to make it bond. Um, but I, with a nice tight fit it won't slide up there anyway. We're not going to be playing with the, we're not going to be pushing up and down on the model or anything are we? Well we might do if we want to make jet noises and play with it and things. So what we've got to do now is work out how long our piece of aluminium needs to be. So. What I can do now is turn this paper over and kind of draw. What my aluminium is going to be like is like this, basically. Um, it is basically going to be a cylinder with a hole in it. Okay, that hole is going to be diameter 1.3. Alright, so I can glue that in there. This diameter here. going to be diameter 2.5. What we don't know is the length. So we've got to work out what our length is. So this recess on the end of here is just check I'm measuring that right. Yeah. It's 0.8. Okay. Now if you remember we said I want 3 mil here. Okay. So 3.0 there and then the thickness of this one here is at its maximum 2.2 so that's 2.2 so as that works out perfectly that's six millimeters perfect so that's going to be six millimeters long with a 1.3 mil hole in the back and then when I push that into there and push this on so it's flush with the end we should have about three millimeters here it doesn't matter if it's 3.2, it doesn't matter if it's 2.9, because it's suspension. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be a precise dimension. If we were doing the rear legs, obviously you want them both the same, because otherwise the aircraft would be sat or wobbly. And that is going to basically give us, um, in fact we can have a look, just to check, just to double check. If we push that in there like that, when we round, we set that in there like that, yep. And we set that gap to three millimeters which is about that a bit less than that there we go that'll do 3.1 okay so that's in like that it's a bit wobbly because it doesn't have the shaft up inside it yet well misses but that's going to basically that's where the top of the oleo is going to sit there it's not going to want to stay on there we can see the top of the oleo is basically level where that slot goes and if we put the wheel on we can see that now if I put the oleo in that we are now pretty much flush with the top of the oleo which is what we want. We could actually go a little bit longer than that I think. I think we could come down another sort of half a millimetre end of the day, all that matters, it's a scale model, we just want it to look right. So yeah, up a little touch from that. Yeah, 
yeah I think that's about right oops this is the trouble you've got everything just dry fitted together I'm fed by doing this I, I keep doing this with Lancaster I want to bloody build something properly um, so it actually glues together and I can paint it and mess with it and yeah, you see that's too high now it's obviously a very very touchy point when that goes in there yeah I think that's about right so what have we got there now four point six no way I've obviously looked at this wrong Three point seven. Let's go for three point five. Bloody wheel would stay on there, right? I'm happy with that, guys. Three point five, and we can see that it's there. So that is three point five, isn't it? Three point. Yes. So I'm happy with that. So we'll change that to 3.5. That makes it 6.5 long. So it's got to be 6.5 millimeters long. So I can go and knock that up on the lathe. It shouldn't take me two minutes and then I can come back. Okay, so we're all ready to go. So what we do then is we get a piece of brass rod. I've already cut this to length. Put your brass rod in there. Okay. Measure the length that's sticking out. All right, so you, you can use a rule, like I have to use a rule here. Measure the length that's sticking out. So we've got there, we've got about three and a half millimeters. Okay. And then measure the overall length of your rod. Okay. And then you can work out then, because we, I can see that this is about 14 millimeters. I know that that hole is about 11 mil deep. So we'll call it 10.5 mil deep, a little bit of clearance at the bottom. So I know now that if I put this in here, this is my little aluminium shaft I've turned up. So it's just basically a piece of aluminium with a 1.3 mil hole in it. So I can push that in there and I know that I need to cut that off to about 10 millimeters. You can see there it's just short of 10 millimeters. So I know then that it'll assemble, it'll all go together and nothing's going to foul because I want that piece of aluminium to go just up inside. But you can see there's a bore in there around that brass. I want that to go up inside there so it forms a lovely joint just like the real thing. You get a real sharp joint, get a wash in there, it look amazing. So basically that's what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this brass into this shaft and then what I can do is put this in there and check that it all looks true because if it doesn't I can grab all of this, I can tweak the brass and put it in so it's slightly bent but to straighten this up. Okay. If I do it the other way round and I try and bend the brass, it's likely to rip the plastic through, through the side of the plastic. So that's why I do it that way round. And if you remember I said earlier, I always have a larger hole than the rod. This has all been degreased, by the way. I've degreased it with Mr. Hobby, Mr. Saw Cleaner. Don't let that stuff get anywhere near your plastic parts. It is like extra thin. It will just dissolve the plastic, so be careful. So if you remember, I said I'm going to make a bigger hole so I can get it to go in. So basically what I can do here is just get some glue on the end of there all right now i've got glue on the end of that shaft there's probably a little bit too much on there actually and i'm going to offer it up to the hole and then push it in like that fast don't dilly and dally because it'll glue and then you won't be able to get it out okay so and it will be glued in like one millimeter deep and you won't be able to pull it back out so we'll get the glue on there whack it together and now that will be in there absolutely solid because i've roughed it up I've gone over with a sand and stick and just roughed up the surface. As you can see on there, the surface is quite rough. Um, and I've done the same on the bottom here because that's going to glue into the into the yoke at the bottom there. And now this, once I know that glue is dry, I'm going to be careful I don't want to glue it in. This is going to go up into there, okay? And I can see that it's looking a little bit off. It's a little bit this way. So it could be that brass is already slightly bent. So what I can do is just then 
tweak the brass until I can see it. I need to do this under the magnifier so I can see what I can do, I'm doing. But what I'm going to do is imagine that's in there straight now. All I would do now is put some glue on there the same, okay? Bang it in quickly, and that'll be it. In job done, and that'll be the whole leg built. Um, then put some glue, put that on there like that. Put some glue around the inside of there, and then push it down and glue it on. And you can see that what we've got now is our oleo or our leg, and the length we've got in here is. Come on, 3.4, 3.5 millimeters, and if we, with it like that, you can see if we put the wheel on, we can see that the, if we put the oleo on like that and I can hold it in place, you can see that now we're a bit more realistic in that we're up level with the, the top of the tire, is sort of square with the top of the oleo, so there we are. So I'm happy with that. All I've got to do now is either squeeze this together or split it here and just close it up. And then we'll glue it on. I'll cover that in a minute. I'm going to go away and get this all sorted out. Right, so got that together now. Um, I did put a little tweak in the brass. I haven't glued the aluminium and the brass into the leg because I want to make sure I get the end nice and square because it looks like every tornado I see parked up has the wheel square. I was thinking of an opportunity to cut it off here and have it actually put, put some steering into it, but it looks like when they're parked up, they're always square. So if I don't if I do it that way, someone will say, so um, what I'll do is I will clean that rubbish off of there. And I've got some, some thin super glue. What I've done, I've put this hub on the end. What I've done is looking at the, looking at this end and this end, got it to line up so it's, it's square. And I've got it sort of flush on the end. So now I've got some thin super glue and I can run that into the joint because there is a gap around it and it will go down in. I can't see a bloody thing here. I cannot see if that glue is going in or even if I put anything on there. There we go. That's a, I can see it's flooded on there now. So that should... Yeah, that's solid. That should soak in and wick its way around and everything. I might even just put a tiny drop on this side just to help it wick down from this side. There we go. And as I say, I did score up the end of the aluminum, aluminium, so it's got somewhere for it to go. Okay, and the cotton bud, just remove the excess glue from there and then throw the cotton by the way don't ever put it down on the side because you'll pick it up and ruin something else with it so that's glued on there now so we can let that set and then once I'm happy I can then take it out square that up or put some slower setting glue on the brass pin push it in I've got some time to orientate it and we're job done so we can see now with it all glued together nice and solid we can see now that we've actually got our wheel in the much better relationship to the oleo okay so it's much lower down so i'm happy with that now the thing i'm not happy about i looked at this and this was just like a flashed over mess in the middle so i cut away the flash i've got a great big i don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's a great big scallop ripped out of it there where the knife's pointing on the top that's only supposed to be a small hole in there, and that's, there's supposed to be a hole in the bottom, and there's nothing there at all. So, um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is fill that in with, get a web of sprue glue in there. Just sort of fill the hole. In fact, I'm going to use a cocktail stick rather than using... I had a cocktail stick earlier. Where is it gone? Where have my cocktails? There they are. Um, I'll just make a web of sprue glue, there's not enough on there, make a web of sprue glue across that hole, just like so, just like you would crystal clear if you were making a window, and that will settle down into there, 
and shrink back. Just put a tiny drop more on the back here. And then I'll be able to draw that through and it'll look like a nice clean old then. But it's going to need a bit of a clean up because it's almost, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost like it's had an ejector pin in there on an angle. Have a look at your kit if you've got one. It almost looks like it had an ejector pin there. Really weird. But it's it's almost like there's an ejector pin at sort of that angle, it's sort of 30 degrees to the surface rather than square to the surface. It's very strange. But um that should dry back nice and thin and then I can just drill through there and it will look great. I'm not going to see much of it anyway because it sits in between the wheels. So there we are. So we can let that dry. Now look at the state of this. This rocket glue, I love the stuff, but the bottles are crap. Look at it, it's just ripped itself to pieces. 25th of the 11th. So, uh, hmm, mint. <laughs> So there we go, right, really what I should do is transfer it into this bottle because this glue's gone off. Oh and that one's all glued up as well. I don't know, it's really funny because this stuff here, the cheapest, no-nonsense, rubbish super glue you can buy, look at that. Every time I use it the top just comes off. Every single time. It's always the bloody same. It's the same with Zap, I have it now with Vital Bond. those tops glue themselves on. I don't know if they changed the material or what, but uh, it's very strange. So anyway, there we go. So um, that's been that. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's just a quick sort of video. Well, I don't know how quick it's been. Not that quick. <laughs> um, it's been a video to show you how to get around this mixture of glue or super glue or anything on my fingers. Because I'm going to touch this. And it was just a video to show you how to get that nice joint in there. Just like that, that nice close fit in panel so there's no uh, no filling needed and how to do this undercarriage or how I'm going about doing this undercarriage and as I say this is not my work guys this is all the work of Mr Phil Fisk and you're going to see some more work of Mr Phil Fisk now you're going to see a load of pictures a little bit of music and these are the, the most recent recent projects he's works on and as I say in the first picture you'll see up in the top right corners Top right corner, Phil's model shed. That's where you can go and find him on Facebook, and uh, go and say hello over there and tell him, tell him I sent you. And um, I'm sure you'd be happy to have a lot of new members. Is it, you have members on Facebook? I don't know. You have subscribers? I, I don't know. I don't know what you have. Don't like Facebook. Anyway, I'll see you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.